Okay. So, have you guys uh, selected any song you want to work on? Song that's super high, and I have to use my false song voice to. Yeah. Nice. Okay, we'll definitely work on it. <laughs> Just asking so that we'll make sure to budget enough time to go through that. Hi, Nika. Uh, hi, Raj. Hi. How are you? Doing well, how are you? Very well, thank you. Hey, Kartik. Hi, Shankar. Okay, so um, I sent a message. I wanted to say this while we were still on the call yesterday, but I hi. hope you got the message. So I was hoping that some of you would bring your songs that you find challenging that we can work on today because, you know, what is a workshop if you don't work on your problems? This is not about this, uh, you know, some abstraction, but also to apply the, the concept to some real uh, you know, challenge that you face and how better than to take a passage in some song that you would love to sing better. And we can take that and try and use our techniques and see if that will improve your uh, experience of singing it or the way it sounds or make it easier in some way. So, okay. Uh, so today is the fifth and final day of the workshop. Uh, welcome to you all. The, the, the last few topics I want to cover, and I, as I said, I've been covering it in order of priority. So I, I, you know, I think that the first days were the, in my mind at least, the most uh, important and challenging uh, aspects of voice culture for Indian singers. And so now we are getting to the sort of tail end of it. So now the topics that we will dis uh, discuss today are relatively narrower, may not apply to everybody. And even if you don't do this, you may not feel a great lack, right? We will definitely uh, feel the lack of not having breath control. You definitely feel the lack of not having proper vowel enunciation and uh, range. But as we get to this part, these are things that um, may or may not be challenging. And one of the things about teaching voice that I discovered is that things that I might think are very difficult, some people find very easy to do and vice versa. So we are definitely in that territory now where the things that I'm going to say, uh, I don't know if you will necessarily find them challenging, but it ne nevertheless, I want you to be aware of these things so that you know, if you become, if you ever run into this problem, you know how to kind of introspect and, and check your own singing and your own practices. Now, so in other words, don't be surprised if you find what I tell you today easy. It could very well happen that you find what I say easy. So the two topics that uh, I have for today, uh, and then we will switch to a slightly different thing is, uh, continuing from yesterday, uh, we have the bridging problem, which is, okay, so we discovered that we have two voices at least, right? One very high voice, very sharp uh, voice, then the normal voice that uh, we talk in, uh, obviously, we, it will not help us if we flip the voice in the middle of singing. It will not sound good. Um, at least to Indian ears, it doesn't sound good. So the, the thing I'm going to teach you is how to bridge this. Meaning how to seamlessly go from one voice to the other and come back down. And go on. Uh, so that's called bridging. That is, you blend these two uh, voice registers together so that you don't make any abrupt changes. And the second is uh, what is called voice or chord compression. So I remember I, I've always told you from the very beginning that you have to minimize the amount of air we use in singing. So I don't know if it's already in your experience, but uh, you should by now already have reduced the amount of air you need to sing because of all the you know, pot belly and, and the way we use our voice and so on. But now I'm going, today I'm going to teach you some specific exercises to minimize 
the amount of air so that you can sing for long periods and you can also uh, keep the health of your voice for a long time because reducing the amount of air you use is critical to that so those are the two things um, for exercise wise and the third thing i want to do is a little bit different from what we've done so far which is i want to give you some general do's and don'ts going forward you know the kinds of things you should do outside of these exercises to keep your voice uh, in good shape and you know to get the maximum effect of your voice when you have to perform and so on then after that we'll get to the songs that you guys would like to work on and then we will end with some discussion i don't know how many of you are planning to come to this uh, uh, yara session this after this evening uh, i hope so. what time coming. is that 6:30 to 8 the uh, the way it is structured at least ramya has told me is that from 6:30 to maybe 7:15 it will be just me presenting and then she'd like from 7:15 onwards some of the participants in this panel to come and give their views and uh, feedback on what they thought uh, of the exercise and um, whether they liked it what else they'd like to see in such a workshop and so on and and you're going to be talking to some other people from the yara group i guess right so this is like this. yeah this is like a presentation so Okay. Uh, Ramya will ask me some questions, I suppose. I see. And okay. I will demonstrate it to a more general audience the, all right. the things that I've learned over okay. over the years and, okay. and how to properly kind of put all this in context. See, in this workshop, we kind of dove directly into okay, these are specific things we do. But that is because by the mere fact that you registered for this workshop meant mm -hmm. that you were already kind of motivated to work on your voice. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people out there who. a kind of issue about it right? so this is a kind of an attempt to kind of open it out to sure. larger okay and you said that is around 715 uh, yeah. there is a another i don't have a specific time for another program so if possible i will definitely come sometime between 715 and how long do you plan to go 715 so the, the the program is meant to go to 8 o'clock but i don't think okay. it will go to sometime between that i will manage to somehow come there because i don't have a timing on this other one i have a question mark on that one okay, okay. thank you yeah i i, I told uh, so i would uh, like to I share had, some feedback definitely yes yeah. yeah. somebody had all these very ambitious goals for that and, and and we kind of decided on the spur of the moment yesterday she said why don't you do this said, okay but we didn't give you guys any notice so hmm. i'm not uh, plus from from my point of view the point of this workshop is to discuss this here if that hap if the other thing happens fine but that's not the no. driver for this workshop okay so um let's get started all right so first thing okay bridging exercises now uh, bridging exercise requires a starting point of the head voice and head voice is not a good thing to start with without a warmed up voice so as i've told you before do not ever try and sing something hard on a cold voice so we will do something else first and then once by doing that we have warmed up our voice then we'll come back to bridging so let me start with a different um, aspect of this uh, the second aspect the voice compression part is relatively uh, does not it's, it's not so demanding on the voice so what is voice compression um so the basic idea is as i said the air is blowing through these vocal cords and the sound or the vibration created by the vocal cords is then traversing through this oral cavity there are two things that are true one is that if you you know i don't know how many of you have ever played with a tuning fork have you ever tapped a tuning fork mm -hmm. so when you tap a tuning fork if you tap it just enough it will give you a brilliant sound if you tap it too hard it will actually get dampened so the the, the the it won't be such a nice sound it won't last as long and same thing i think i gave you the example of playing on a flute if you play on a flute just the right amount 
create a huge sound. But if you overblow, the, um, the flute will start reducing in volume actually, and then at some point it will stop. So same some principle applies to our voice cords that there is some optimal amount of air that needs to blow through those cords in order for you to produce the best sound. But the problem is finding what that optimal is because we're all different, we all have different voice cords. So what I'm going to show you is an exercise to find that optimal. And the second thing about it, which is kind of a corollary, is that even when you want to sing loudly, you don't blow more air. Just like in a flute, you don't just pump it with air and get more volume. The same thing is true with our voice. That when you um, when you try and shout, it doesn't necessarily produce a, a more efficient sound. It may temporarily increase the amplitude of the waves because you're putting more energy into it. But then the energy that you put into this uh, vibration will also die down quickly. That means that uh, it will not resonate as much, and it will also not be heard as long. So both these things will be true. Okay. So what is chord compression? So this is this is the exercise. Um, let me get my... So I'll, I'll show you with my voice how chord compression sounds, and then we will go from there. Okay, so I'm going to try and sing a note, just R, ah, and then I'm going to try and voluntarily reduce the amount of air I'm going to put in the sound. So I, I exaggerate, of course, I'll start with a very loud voice and then pull back. Okay. Uh, Okay, so it went from overblowing to underblowing. Again. Uh... You hear it? So I know there's some background noise here, so uh -huh. it may not be as like normal, but the, the thing that happens is when you reduce the amount of uh, air you push through, First, the volume will decrease, and then at some point you hear this kind of raspy sound. That is called vocal fry. Vocal fry is the sound F R Y fry, isn't it? You know, frying vegetables, like fry. So that vocal fry is the sound that happens when the the vocal cord is trying to vibrate, but there's not enough energy in the air. So it is kind of vibrating halfway and then collapsing halfway and collapsing. So that's what you get. And this is this is a very important phenomenon called vocal fry. Now, if you didn't know about this, you will just think this is either something you can ignore or something that is unimportant. But it turns out this is actually very important. And the reason it's important is that by focusing on vocal fry, you can actually strengthen your vocal cords, right? You're, you're, you're right at that edge where it's between, you know, enough air to make a sound, and enough, no, not enough air to make any sound at all. And the vocal fry is in between. And by blowing air at that level, you're getting the vocal cord to get used to not using too much air. Okay, so that is the scientific explanation. So the way it goes is, so you can go, and then you can do it at every note. So I can try a different note. Some musicians in, you know, in rock music and pop music actually use that as a stylistic effect, right? They do it purposely to kind of make that kind of sound. So it's not just a throwaway sound. It's actually a useful sound for us to have control of. So we're going to try and practice this a little bit to get to the chord compression part, right? So Anita, your question? 
Are you muted? I, yes, I, I do. And uh, when you mentioned that, you know, in Western music, a lot of the songs, it, it almost feels like they are very raspy and that's intentional. Mm -hmm. It's the nature of the song itself. There are many, like, like you mentioned, some rock songs and other genres where that is the nature of the nature of the song itself or the, the raspiness how do they manage to sing the whole thing in, in that is that I, I just a general question and you can address it later too uh, you know in that would be very strenuous you know to in a right. way is what i'm thinking at least so for sure okay so two things one is that the vocal fry is a technique that those people have practiced a lot so even though they do it repeatedly in their songs their voice does not get damaged because it is not the first time they're doing it on stage they've been doing it for a long time and this allows the vocal cords to be strong enough to do it but nevertheless even that has a limit if you do it for a over long time then you will ruin your vocal cords then also right so basically the vocal cords have to relax if they don't relax then you are putting a strain on them and there is a limit to which they can sustain prolonged strain right so that's that's one of the problems that we have that uh, these are kind of like medicine you use a little bit you get good effect but if you use too much then it becomes a problem Right? You, can, you can damage yourself too. I apologize, there is a landscape guy who is going. I'm going to try and mute myself here also. I, I tried to communicate with him to say, please don't do it right now. But I don't think he understood. So, yes, we no. can do it. Okay, all right, let's continue. Okay, so this is the exercise. So um, we are going to pick any note. I'm going to pick one that is in the middle of my range and I'm going to sing with vocal fry, right? And the way the vocal fry goes is... Uh, so you always start from a good place. A relaxed note, full uh, open throat and belly uh, in control. Uh, In that case, it took me a long time to get to the fry part. So I've trained my voice to use very little air at this point. So it does not go into fry, even as I reduce my air outflow. So again. Uh... So when you get to the vocal fry, don't be afraid of it. Hold the uh, air pressure to keep that vocal fry. Okay, so that you can sustain the vocal fry for some time. And that will actually help you make the uh, voice cord stronger. Okay, so I want you guys to try uh, mute on mute and then we will... See how it sounds for you. Uh, sir, basically, you're just controlling your breath uh, when you, uh, basically, you're controlling your breath when you start uh, and you come until the uh, uh, ah, fry. So what I'm doing is, I'm first starting with the normal note singing 
and then I'm reducing the amount of air I'm letting out. So if you remember what we said in the beginning of the workshop is that you want to control the exhale, right? By controlling the exhale and minimizing it, minimizing it, minimizing it, minimizing it, until it becomes not enough to produce the sound. That's all, that's all I'm doing. So, so it almost, um, and maybe when, when we sing, you, I like and explain at that time. Let us wait, I'll wait for my question. Okay. Because it's sort of related to what Ramya just said, where what I find is that I can hold it to the end and if there is no fry coming in, my breath is over by then. But it's not frying. So I can't go beyond that because my it's the end of my breath almost. So, so, so that means you have to start at a lower level of breath. So that means you're expending too much breath already. So in the in the production of the note, you're expending so much breath that you're losing it all. You're losing your entire tank on the uh, by overblowing your vocal cords. So then what you should do is start by at a, at a lower level of uh, exhalation. So, so instead of saying, I, I can do this uh, at that level and I can bring it back all the way. Maybe you start with a uh, uh, softer sound and then pull it back from there. So you will still have air left in your tank when you pull back. So it's a loudness versus softness. It sounds like that, but what it is is the amount of air you're pushing, but the way you control it is at this point loudness. Right, okay. So when so we sing it, I'll... Yeah, intuitively try and sing softly. I, I, the only reason I'm, I'm not... I'm hesitating to say softly because I, what I don't want you to do is to say, ah, right. I don't want to be breathy sound, not that kind of sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, when we sing, you know, we'll, we can clarify that then. Okay, okay. Uh, Ramya, you want to show us? You know, for this, uh, you may have to increase your mics because it will be soft. Nice, yes. So, how how did it feel in your throat when you were singing it? Uh, I, I could feel that the amount of air coming out of my throat is uh, reducing, and how um, how I am not able to uh, sing the way I started initially. Right. So, what will happen now is so now that your voice will get used to this, you do this a few times. Then, what you should see is that at the end that your voice has some. At least for me, at least, uh, I felt that it was feeling relaxed, that my voice is feeling rested. Now, I don't, I can't explain it, um, why it feels that way, but it's, it's at least that's what I feel. Okay, try one more time. Yeah, you can you can reduce it even more. So at some point you become like uh, like static. Uh, okay. That is vocal form. Okay. Um, Shankar. Uh, Oh, your mic cut out completely for me. Uh, right, I, I could hear a little bit of the fry, uh, but then I don't know how long you're holding the fry. Did it just disappear at the end or? Yeah, a little bit. I'll, I'll try to hold it for a little bit longer. I'll get closer yeah, to so, my... so don't Don't start off so loud so that you can get to the fry faster. Okay. Uh, Yeah, that's right. So that's that's what you want. That's the effect you want. And do it again. Uh, uh, right. Kartik? 
Yeah, you'll definitely have to come closer to the camera. This won't hear you. Uh, uh, yeah, try again. So, uh, so start at a you know, softer starting point so that you can get spend more time on the fry itself. Right. I'll so, try it lower sounds like maybe because like it's kind of higher. So I'll try it lower, I guess. Okay, try. Uh, wait. Uh, uh, I heard a weird sound again. Try again. I don't know what that came from. Uh, I can't do it. Wait. No, it'll come. It'll come. So it, it's a matter of getting used to. So um, sometimes you know, I, I struggled for a long time. I couldn't do it myself because you know if you have not ever wanted to do it, so you in fact in the past have tried to avoid getting into that mode of the voice, then you will kind of uh, find it difficult to actually voluntarily enter into it. You know? So that's part of the issue. So it's just a. It's like training anything else. It's like. Um, that these are modes of the voice that we have never touched before. And so the voice has trouble going there. Okay, Anita? Okay. Uh... Right, that is vocal fry. Um, so if you start softer, then you can even last longer in the vocal fry. I'm going to do that one more time because I, at some point, I reduced that. I felt like I had reduced that air flow mm -hmm. to reach that point, and I had to very consciously do it. So, because like you said, it's not very natural mm -hmm. to, to get it to that point. So, okay, let me try one more time. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, so you discover that if you, uh, as you do it, you'll get more and more uh, you'll be able to do vocal fry for a long period. Like I, I can do it. Uh, I can do the whole thing in vocal form. Mm -hmm. But it's just because I've been you know, right. trying to do it mm -hmm. Okay, Ariman? Uh... Wait, that was too short. Uh... That's good. Um, one thing I, I can't tell because the way the camera is positioned. Don't, don't, don't look up or like you're goggling or something. Like, just make sure you're level. Okay. And uh, I like the fact that you are able to hold the vocal fry for a long time. Right. So, yeah. so, so do that again. So make sure that the vocal fry. So if you can lower the uh, air even a tad more. Even you treat less than what you're doing now. It should really you could you should hear the the individual beats of them. Right. Uh... Right. Try it from a softer starting point. You're starting starting out very loud. Uh... Again. Oh. 
So part of the reason you may be finding this a challenge is also because your voice is changing. Yeah. So it's even more difficult cracking. for the vocal cords to be stable. Like that. Yeah. Keeps on cracking a lot. Right. So one thing you should not do, mm -hmm. it should not happen rather, is that you should not feel like coughing at the end of it. If you feel like you want to cough, then you're doing something wrong. Okay. Right? So then you, that means you're not relaxed or something else is going on. Uh, maybe you need some water or something and, and then try again. And the, the whole point is to relax the voice to such a point that you now build from this relax point up. Right? Yeah, Anita? So I would like to try it one more time and given some of these parameters of keeping it low to start with, like you did. So can I try one more time? Yeah, of course. Okay. Is that? <clears throat> ah, you should not feel that way at the end. <laughs> then that's what I was trying to avoid. But um, I wanted to know: Is that? train of uh, sound begin with even because sometimes I know most of us are trying it starting off higher in the sense we're not and that's why we run out of breaths before we reach the end yeah. but I think what you're trying to say it struck me that and I'm, I'm trying to see if I'm you know correct me if I'm wrong but I'm I think what you're trying to say is that start at that lower pitch from the beginning and then you can hold it longer because you've started extremely low yeah. and that helped I think I tried it a few times and I thought it helped so I thought let me try I think I have to practice so that. the thing is that you can do vocal fry at any note the pitch does not matter so much it is easier in the lower note but you should uh, be able to do vocal note on any pitch so for example uh, So I started at a high pitch. I did not relax my voice and did I can hit the vocal fry. Or even So this is the sound of my voice when I'm using absolutely minimum air. Right? It sounds weird. We never actually use it in singing, but it's actually one of the building blocks that uh -huh. to strengthen the muscles of your, or the cartilage of your vocal cord, whatever it is made of. Okay, now to move on to the actual thing that this is meant for, right? Chord compression. So chord compression is just singing, not vocal fry, but singing a normal note, but reducing the amount of air to sing that note. And chord compression has two parts to it. One part you've already done, which is to, you know, after you start singing, try and use minimal sound, but not so much that you get into vocal fry. But uh, there's one part before that, which is what is this is bizarre name for it in um, Western music. It's called inhaling the voice. Inhale. So I, I tried to find a good explanation or description of what that is, but I couldn't find one. So I'll just demonstrate it to you and, and you know, hopefully you can get it. So what it sounds like is you try and think like you're inhaling, but you don't actually inhale, okay? So what it does is it makes your sort of vocal apparatus go back because when you're inhaling, you're not singing, right? You only sing when you're exhaling. So when you're inhale, inhaling, the, all the vocal uh, thing will kind of sit down. And then we will sing at that um, sort of, relaxed position, okay? So I will exaggerate this for you, but that's not how you actually do it, but because it's hard to do this over Zoom. So it goes like this, you go, huh? right? Like, huh? and when you do that, huh? like take a short, short breath in and stop. Huh? Uh, like that. 
So you go. Uh, so this is the sound I am. Uh, if if I don't use that, I would sound like this. Uh, with the in inhaled voice, it sounds like. Uh, the, in both cases, the sound of this note is the same. But what the uh, inhale, initial inhale does is it allows your voice to prepare itself for minimal exhalation. Meaning that it kind of closes up the, uh, the vocal cords so that it kind of what is called zipping. So the vocal cords are like this, right? And when you are uh, breathing in normally, they're open like this. So when you sing, they have to zip up that you don't realize it because it's involuntary. They have to come together and close up. Doing this actually gives them a signal. Oh, so we have to close up first. Because what you're doing is you are uh, inhaling and stopping. I'm exaggerating, of course, but you actually do it in a very minute amount, very microscopic. Uh, I'll, I'll now the problem, of course, let's see if we can actually hear it on the mic. I'll show you how to sing a note with very little air, but it won't go into fry. Okay, it sounds like something like this, right? Uh, I'm kind of keeping it just above the fry. If I lower it anymore, you will start hearing the fry. Okay, so what is the purpose of this? The purpose of this exercise is to teach you to sing or get used to the feeling of singing the note like this. Because if you sing it like this, you're using minimal air. Use minimal air, you can use your breath for a long time and it will keep your voice from drying out. So the thing that we cannot do in this workshop is if you practice it enough, all the notes that you sing, you'll sing like this. You don't have to remind yourself to go like that first. But in the basic beginning exercise, you have to do this to remind your voice to zip up. Uh, another way to think about it is to, uh, when you sing, uh, I, I'll try and zip up while I am singing. So to see if you can hear the sound difference. Uh, so this is the broad sound. I'm, I'm keeping my voice very uh, chords unzipped. Uh, could you tell the difference? Was there any difference between the beginning of the note and the end of the note? Okay, one more time. Uh, so towards the end, I was using very little air that I can then sustain for a long time. But this is a tricky thing to master. Yeah. So I have it's a question on that. Yeah. This is as an exercise, we're doing short sounds, right? Like A, uh, E, etc. But yeah. when, if you're singing regular, right? Like a song, like, you know, the song that we were uh, trying out the other day, um, Krishna song that we were doing, Yamuna yeah. Kinare. If you're doing that, um, as a matter of fact, will it be, will you be taking those little short bursts yeah. where, as yeah. part of the singing? Yeah. When you take that, because you have no, to breathe I, in. I, I, I'm just teaching you to, to know the feeling, what it okay. feels like inside. You okay. don't actually do that while singing. So that's what I'm trying to differentiate between an exercise okay. and an actual performance. You never do this in the performance. If you start hicking like this, then they'll say something's wrong with you. All right, okay. Fine. That's what I just needed to clarify. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just trying to get you guys used to this feeling of what it feels like to sing with low air. Because it's a feeling you have to get used to. Okay. okay. All right. So anybody want to try this? Uh, all I want you to do is this. I want you to do that inhale, that sharp inhale, 
and then sing a note. And I want you to sing that, uh, the, keep that note. I want to see how long you can hold that note without losing um, the shape. So if, if you lose breath, it will obviously start sliding down or change uh, its color in some way. So I want you to sing like, And I want you to sharply end it too. I don't want you to sing all the way until you lose all your breath. Okay? Who wants to go first? Oh, Kartik and Shankar, your cameras are off. Camera is off. Sorry about No, no, it's okay. Kartik, you want to try first? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Let's go to Ramya. So I want you to reduce the air even more. I still feel that at least sounds like you're using a lot of air. So you can you are capable of holding this note much longer, almost twice the amount of time you're holding right now. Okay. Uh... Good. So I can I can feel that you're trying to reduce the air as you are holding that note. So I want you to uh, start earlier to reduce the air. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh... Good. It okay. was not to go to the fry, so I just stopped. No, no, it's okay. That's okay. That's that's good. So that means that you're actually minimizing the air. Now, can you do the same thing for a higher note? I, I let you pick da from there or something, like the third from there. Uh... Very good. One uh... more time. Yeah, pinch, pinch it. Please. That sounded very good. So not only are you pinching the sound, but you're also using the resonances in your uh, face, it looks like. So I can hear the, the overtones from your voice. Very good. Okay, who wants to go next? Yes, sir. Ariman this time. Oh, Shankar, okay. Uh, could you just correct me if I uh, do any? Uh... <clears throat> That's my job, yeah. <laughs> Uh, 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 oh, very good. So that's that's exactly how it is supposed to be. Um, the mic is cutting out a bit of the sound, but that's okay. But I can tell that you did not go into vocal fry, but you did reduce the, the air. So can you try a higher note? Maybe it will come yeah. to you. Uh, uh, <coughs> Uh... Oh, very good. So again, well, it, it, the mic is cutting in and out, but but it's coming through. So yeah, you're doing the right thing. So now the idea is to get used to this feeling. Okay. So that then, you know, when um, Manu or or Shalmalitai or somebody like that sings, when they sing, uh, you know what they're doing. Yeah. They're really, they have really zipped up their voice so that they can hold this note in a very clean way and for a long period without tiring out. Right? Yeah. Uh, and then once you know how to hold the note, then you can also use the same way to move the note. Go, uh, Because all because you've reduced the amount of air. Yep. 
but but reducing the air while not sacrificing the quality of the noise that is the most important right you want sound if it doesn't sound good then there's no point in doing it okay now karthik i'll try <clears throat> Uh, 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 No, no. Yeah. So if you have the workshop, then. So if you want, we can we can. I don't know if you have another slot. We can try and I can ask them right now if they're say available next Friday. And then we can yeah. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Why don't you tell us a date? Then I can ask him. Okay. Why don't you tell me the date, and then I will ask him. Okay. Okay. I. Yeah, yeah. I think I think since we're talking about a workshop, then it's better for them to be there. Otherwise, what happens today? It will just be my lecture, and that will be the end of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. So, I'll, yeah, you can you can cancel it on your end, and I'll cancel it on my end. But but I would not rather cancel, but rather change the date. You can if you can change the date, that will be better. So if you can confirm a date, then I can. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. We're still going. We're still in the session. Yeah, I can. That's what I was saying. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the holdup was because Ramya was trying to find out if a different day for the presentation would work better for you guys. So she is asking about the last Friday of October. I don't have a calendar in front of me. I don't know what that date is. Mm, uh, that's okay. the that's the. Thirty to thirty. I don't know. I don't know if that was the date she meant, but um, let me ask her to confirm that. Thirtieth uh, uh, yeah. of uh, October. So it's not Halloween actually for all the children on. on of course, this time it may be virtual Halloween, but. So oh, there's Halloween too. Right? Okay. Thirtieth uh, is not Halloween though. Thirtieth is the day before. Thirty-first. This time it falls on a Saturday. It's not even a weekday. Okay, so so I'll ask her if it's October thirtieth that she means. Okay, let's continue. Yeah. Uh, we run out of time. Okay, so okay, where were we? Uh, Karthik, yes, uh, chord compression. So I, so can you pick a higher note? I think the low note is the problem. Uh... Right. So are, I can I can see the the volume going down and not hitting fry. That's very good. Um, but it it's kind of going down all the way. What I want you to do, and this is for all of you, I want you to quickly come down to some low level and then stay there. The whole point of holding the note is to hold it at one sustainable low amount of air.
Can you hold it longer? Or is, are you running out of breath? Make, make, remember the pot belly. Everything has to be there. Everything has to kick in for this to work properly. Uh... Good. So, so what we need to do is work on different notes like this, right? And then that way you can get your chord compression to uniform. Okay. Did I do Ariman already? No, I don't think. No, Uncle. Okay, go ahead. Uh... Uh... I'm not trying to cough, but then when my voice goes soft. No, and then search cracky. Try, try higher, try higher note. Uh, I can't see you, so I don't know whether your camera is off or. Oh, sure. Second, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Good. So one more time. Uh, Very good. Anita? Uh, So I don't know, but, but for me, it sounds like you still have vocal fry in your voice. Oh, but this time, I'm sorry. We didn't need the vocal fry. What I must no, fry. no, no. So sing the song, sing the note with the least amount of air without fry. Just about so the this fry. time, there's no fry. Okay. Mm. I was trying to bring you in the fry. Okay. So. Uh. It still sounds like fry to me. I don't know. Are you getting the rumbling sound in your voice? No, I'm not. No, okay. I took maybe. it at a higher pitch, in fact. Okay, Let maybe. me increase the volume here. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm on low zoom. volume. One minute. Maybe Zoom is doing something. Yeah, I've given it max volume. Okay. So, uh... Uh... Ah, perfect. That you know, you nailed it. So you want to have that feeling of, uh, I don't know if you're feeling this, but the expected feeling is that you feel a calm note in your in your voice. You don't feel that like your voice is being um, unnecessarily run into the ground or there is any tension. So this is that feeling that there is no tension in the voice. And and I think the second thing that came to mind was really the the close, the sharp close in the sense the ending is not kind of like in, in the past sessions we have ended taking it you know more gently. Here we kind of closed it. Right. So really, I want uh, a sharp right? close. Yeah. The sharp close is important. Yes. Yes. So that's because what came. That's what I was trying to emphasize as well. What will happen is normally when you're singing with a lot of air, even if you let it degrade gracefully, there's enough air pressure in the voice mm -hmm. cord that will have a natural die down. Mm -hmm. When you're singing at this low, relaxed, minimum air level, if you let go, it'll go into vocal yep. fry. You're right. Or, or you have to stop it. Exactly. You have to stop it. Exactly. Forcefully. That's what I was focusing on was to stop it fully so that um, it doesn't go into that vocal fry. Okay. I think I understand the concept and the 
practice. Sorry for this distraction. So Ramya is asking now whether October 16th is okay for you guys. 16th is next Friday. Aryaman, are you okay with 15, 16? Uh, one second, Uncle. Anita, you're on mute. You can talk. Yeah. Uh, next week, I'm in um, sort of international conferences. So the timings may all be kind of off. So mm -hmm. I think 16th may not work for me, but 30th will definitely will be fine for me. Or even 23rd. It's just next week. Yeah, 23rd is the Friday, not available. Okay. Uncle, I'm fine with any Friday, actually. What about you, Ramya? Uh, any Friday apart from today works, sir. What about you, Kartik and uh, so I, Ramya, think, I think any of those dates that you mentioned should be fine for us. Because Ramya is very uh, insistent that all of you guys should participate in it. And, and I will, what I, let me check on the schedule of that conference, which is going on for the whole week. And mm -hmm. there may be nothing on 16th evening, you know, our time. I just have to, because of the time conversion, mm -hmm. uh, it is based out of multiple countries. So I just have to make sure that those, okay. uh, I'm able to attend it. That's so all. we have to kind of do this quickly because it is, we are changing the date from today to some other future date. We'll right. let you know by tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow might be a bit late. She wants to change the announcement because it's there today, right? It's supposed to be today. Oh. So rather than cancel it, she wants to change the date on it. So she wants to I see. Why don't you go ahead with 16th then? Because that seems to work for everybody. I'll try to come there if possible and we'll take it like that. Okay. Let us do 16th. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So now the last uh, exercise, bridging. Okay. So for bridging, we have to do this. We have to go back to our head voice. If you remember from yesterday, we started head voice like this. So what we're going to do in this exercise is we're going to bring it down, right? Because now here's the tricky part. So we're going to bring it down. At some point, your voice will want to flip into normal voice. You're going to try and avoid it. We're going to try and postpone it until, as far as we can. So it goes like this. There is a limit to it, but the, the idea is to prolong that limit with practice. See, now my voice wants to go to that. Right? That is normal voice. So, but I, I could not do this until now. So for a long time, it would flip like this. See that? So this is the, what is called the phase change or what is in Western music called the passage, passaggio. So that passage is what we want to smooth. And the way you smooth that passage is to uh, postpone the transition as much as you can in both directions. So in the coming down direction, it is So I know that at the next note, I will not be able to hold it in head voice. So I want you guys to try now. You can try it on mute. First, find your head voice and then gradually come down and as you come down kind of tenaciously hang on to the head voice don't let go of it is it clear so i i will do it well you guys can also try on me
I can go quite a bit down now because of my practice. It won't be the same for you. Okay, let's start with the person I think will have the most trouble with this, is Aryaman. Oh, oh. No, 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 wait, wait. That is not head voice. That is still your chest voice. Oh, okay. Okay, keep going. Why did you stop? See, that's where your chest voice started. Okay, oh. one more time. Yeah, one more time. Good, very good. Okay. Shankar. Is that? Keep going, keep going. Let's see how far he can go. It's okay, you can switch to chest voice. I want to stop at the first chest voice note you get. I don't want you to just lose it. I want you to flip it to the other voice and then stop. Okay. That's good. So now you know. So this is just to get you a sense of where your chest was. Right. Okay. Karthik? Okay. That's good. So, so your uh, head voice flipped very quickly. Right. That's okay. So what it's it's there's no absolute rest has to be here or there but over time it has to improve so when you practice this a little bit you know in a week or two weeks from now you'll be, be able to bring it even lower so try one more time very good that's good uh, anita Good. Very good. One, one more time. Somewhere there, you, you you switched to chest voice, but I couldn't quite tell because my connection was not very good. Try one more time. Okay. Right. So you felt. Did you feel that transition when you switched? Okay. Okay. Now, now we're going to do the other way. The other way is, is especially for Carnatic musicians, it's a big you know, trouble spot. So be, be careful. So we're going to go from chest voice and you see how high we can go. Okay. Now that we have done head voice, already your voice is box prepared for the high notes. 
So you'll discover that you can actually go higher than you could before. And, and so, so the, the, the bridging works like this. So we're going to start in the chest voice and see how high we go. But keeping in mind that you cannot go into a strained position of your voice. So it's very important at this point to make sure you're having proper posture, your breath is good, and you go like this. Uh, so I'm now using my normal voice or chest voice. Uh, so that is my limit. So if I go about that, uh, you see the difference? So I want you to go from chest voice to the first head voice, but head voice note, but I want to postpone that head voice transition as much as possible. So again, uh, did you hear the change in the quality of the voice? Was it coming through on the audio? So I want you to feel the same. You want to feel that at some point, your, your, if you keep your voice relaxed, it will want to flip into head voice. Okay, so that is the transition. Okay, so who wants to try this? Let me try it with Shankar. I think he's the one who's been most interested in this bridging. Is it, uh, so should I start low and then uh, get up to the... Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, So I'm saying stop at the first head noise note, but try and push it up so you delay the flip okay. as much as you can. That is the essential of bridging in both directions, coming down as well as going up. Like just like you did the coming down, I want you to do the same thing up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, so now, one question I have on the last note before you flipped, I, I felt the volume went up. Yeah. Were you trying to, so I don't want that. I don't want the volume to go up. I want all the notes to sound same volume. Uh, right, so try again. Uh, So this is the, the place we have to work on, this, this bridge part, where the more you do this exercise, the, the seamless it will become. So when you actually sing uh, your khayal or your kriti, it will suddenly, you'll discover that your voice is going up and down. It is smoothly flipping into head voice and coming down, and you will not even realize. Yeah. Okay, Ramya? Uh, right, so you saw so somewhere along the way it, it flipped the headboard, right? So try and try one more time and try to push it at least one note delay, one more note in case you can. So, where did were you able to push it by one note at least? Yeah, did, did uh, okay. maybe yeah. just half, but uh, not complete one. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Karthik. Uh... Start low. Start low. Start. Uh, okay. Mm. Yeah, start low. Start low. Yeah. Uh... Uh, 
that time. So that is good. So one thing I liked about it is that there was no volume increase, right? So you're conquering the first obstacle, which is that no shouting, right? Very good. So now try to do the same thing, exact thing again, and try to flip one note more. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's right. So if you practice this more, you'll get to one more note and one more note. And then when you sing that, you'll be able to sing your normal songs without ever even having to flip into head voice for those notes. And so then in the end, what you will have is a relaxed singing without shouting, right? You're not increasing your volume, but you're reaching all the high notes easily. I, I, I hope that this is easy for you guys to do that. No one, I can't tell for sure, but I don't hear any strain. But that is that goes without saying. None of this should be any strain at all. It should be just as comfortable singing the low notes as the high notes. Okay, uh, Anita? Good. I, I want to try it one more time because yeah, I yeah. start right, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think you need to start a little lower. Yeah, so. Um... <clears throat> Or maybe I have to start yeah. even lower. Even lower. Okay. So. <laughs> Right. So you, you could you could see the the flip, that's right? Right. That's 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 the thing. That's the thing you have to be aware of, and over time try to delay in both directions, and so, that is what will get you the seamless up and down singing. So I have a question about the use of this head voice versus the chest voice. Is it that mm -hmm. there is more head voice in Western music? Would you say that in the sense it's uh, is it's, higher. So, in no, so that it, in the in Western music, head voice is not shunned. So if you go into head voice, it's fine. But mm. it's not like you can do head voice whenever you feel like, right? So even even in Western music, what they actually want you to use is mixed voice, which is that even when you're singing head voice, you never sing pure head voice. You don't you don't ever sing. Ah! You will sing. Oh, which is a combination of chest voice and head voice. Oh, versus oh. So they don't like that thin head voice. Okay. Nobody likes that. Right? There are some people who give pure head voice concerts. Mm -hmm. It's kind of exotic. Yeah. Okay, Ariman? Part of the opera. Opera. Yes. Yeah. In opera, I use a lot. Yeah. Because they, then they really, really go very high. Yeah. Mm. Yes, uncle. Oh, sorry. One yes. second. Yeah. Oh, let me just take that. That video filters. There's an update. Sorry. Mm. Uh, could you repeat the exercise again, please? So you start with the chest voice. Uh, and, and go up to, you, you have to flip to the head voice and then stop. Okay. Uh, First head, I know you can you can go much higher with the head voice. I want you to stop at the first voice, the sorry, first note you have to sing in head voice. Okay. I want and then I want you to repeat the exercise and try and delay it by one more note. Ah. Uh, 
happen, it'll happen. So it's not always going to happen when you want it, but it, it comes with practice, basically. So that the whole point of this exercise is to always keep your voice in a relaxed frame. Don't ever get pinged on go. Don't, you know, a lot of I've seen, you know, when I go to composers, they all these kids singing, oh, you know, so like they're here pulling their voice up and ruining their voices, right? It's not a good, so when you see their neck muscles go up like that, the sure sign that they're doing something wrong. Okay, uncle. Yeah. So don't ever, you know, the, the high notes are not in the stars, they're inside you, right? So you don't go like this and you don't pull it up. You, you, you flip to head voice when you need to, but only when you need to. Because if you don't use head voice, then you can damage your chest voice. And then we use practice to make sure that we postpone that as much as we can. Okay, so that brings us to end, so end of the exercises. Uh, any questions? Um, yeah, Anita? Um, so, uh, so now that we went up all the way up, Ariyama, mm -hmm. coming down again from the head voice down to the chest voice. I was just trying that while you were talking. So is that something that could be practiced no, no, up just, and down? We just did that, right? First we did head voice to down and uh, chest voice to head voice. Oh, That's what okay. we did. That was the previous exercise. Ah, okay. That's you can combine them together. Down, right. You can combine them together. You can go. Then you go. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So that's both ways you have to try and push. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a good exercise as a combination, is what you're saying. Yeah. Up you have to down. do it together. But the problem usually is that when you're trying to postpone the chest voice, keep on to the chest voice and postpone the head voice. It is not easy. You'll find to do the other exercise. You'll, you, it's not even though they look like they go together. It's actually much harder to do these two exercises one after the other. Oh really? Okay. Because when you say, uh, I do that now. Coming down, uh, my voice will immediately want to flip to chest. Remember that downward exercise is the opposite. The downward exercise is oh. ah. this flip back to chest voice, you have to postpone, but that is harder to do if you have just done the opposite exercise. Okay. The voice does not like flipping like this back and forth. For some reason, that seems easier for me to do it up and down. So I was just, yeah. that's why I was just trying to see if it's a be, pattern. Yeah, some things will be easier for you. Uh, as I said at the beginning of this class today, that um, it's it's a mystery of nature, right? Some people find it very easy to do some of these things. Some okay. I, yeah, I just wanted to understand, you know, is it okay to be practicing yeah, that yeah, way? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You can do it together. You can do it any order. It, okay. Order doesn't really, really matter. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any other, any other questions? Uh, sir, uh, you uh, you mentioned that uh, most of the uh, teachers and in, uh, Indian teachers they uh, make the students sing at a very lower note because mm -hmm. they will be unable to sing uh, high higher notes. And uh, I have frequently heard that uh, as uh, low a note you can sing, as an as uh, low as you can go to whatever note. Uh, similarly, you can sing a very high note. So. Uh, your, uh, as in, you can sing high notes if you can sing like very low notes. I, I, yes, I was not able to associate some, that. that. That might be some truth to it. I don't know. I have not experienced it. So there is one theory that, you know, the Hindustani singers they practice something called kharaj practice, which is singing very low notes and holding them. Now there's a lot of um, controversy about whether that actually is useful or not. Uh, one thing I think that. Uh, courage helps with is this uh, chord compression, chord compression. So when you sing low notes like that, it helps you zip up your voice better. Okay. That's my, my theory. I have not really done a lot of experimenting with it to know for sure, but yeah, take it for what it is. I mean, 
a lot of people say that Kharaj singing has no use. <laughs> and, and, the, and the practitioners will say, oh, Kharaj singing is sacred. You won't know, you don't, you won't know how useful it is until you do it. So there is you know, strong beliefs on both sides. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sorry, you're on mute, Anita. And when you mentioned going that low and holding it like that, I was just thinking of the Hindustani courage at that time because I've heard them going that low. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad you connected that part too. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, guys? I, I, I didn't get to the the song part. Do you guys have any songs that you want to show me? Uh, Uncle, I have this um, song. Uh, so um, it's a it's a song in Malayalam, um, and there's this really high part. Uh, it's actually a female who sings it, so just want to try it out. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have to use my false voice, by the way, because if I use my real voice, then I'll start shrieking. It's not a false voice; it's your voice. Uh, yeah, my um, what's it called? My head voice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, So is there any tips that you could suggest for that? Because it starts like this. Yeah. So first of all, you have to realize that, you know, as high as your voice can go, there are still limits to it. You cannot push your voice beyond that limit. Okay, that's number one. Second, uh, you are trying to kind of move too fast. So the way to increase, uh, if you remember the range expansion, you have to do it step by step. So if you want to go to a high note, you have to first hit all the notes in between before you can go to that last high note. What you're trying to do is you're trying to skip all those and go all the way to the top. It won't work. So you have to try and sing that same song that you sang, but don't mm -hmm. sing only. Just make it a little flatter. See what happens. Uh, uh, or, uh, uh. Mm, ah. You need to play. I, I don't know what it was supposed to be. Um, so I can't tell whether that's correct or not. Is that what you wanted to do or? Um. For the so my mom wanted to make me sing it with the karaoke. So in the karaoke, thing, can you sing it at the lower pitch? Tell okay. me how the melody goes, and then you shift it up. Okay. So this is how it's This is the tune. I'll sing mm -hmm. it in bass because that's what I'm doing right now for like whenever I practice with the karaoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 I think that would be much better. Right? And then does it come down from there? Or? Yeah, it goes like, so I have to go back to my, not my head voice, but I have to go to higher pitch after that. Because uh, 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 if I do a little bit, it'll go, uh, it'll go lower, so I'll have to go like, uh, so. Okay, I, I'll have to listen to the song to know exactly what you're trying to achieve, but try and sing it to the head voice now. Let's see if it works. Let me sing it and see if that's what you want. Is that what you're trying? No, this is the part before that, Uncle. Sorry. Okay, okay. Sounds okay to me. Um, uh, here, Uncle, I'll send you this song name if you'd like. Okay. <laughs> okay, anybody else have a song they want to discuss? Anybody else have a song they want, they have a problem or a challenge with? Kartik or Shankar that you want to try and use this technique song? Uh, I can't, personally, I can't think of any like specific examples off the top of my head, but I'll be sure to incorporate these. These have been helpful for me personally. These are, actually, these have been 
Because yeah, I, mean, I told you I've had I've been having that problem with range for one, but then also with with the certain range that I have, trying to you know make it between my uh, chest voice and my head voice. So this this actually helped a lot for me. Very good. So uh, you know, one day when I catch up with you, I want to see to see what that song is that you had trouble before with. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anybody else have any? Uh, sir, I just wanted to mention about one song. Uh, mm -hmm. So today, uh, when oh, in fact yesterday and today when we um, had this uh, siren uh, exercise and things like that, uh, uh, today I remembered uh, about the yodeling, uh, which usually Kishore Kumar is very famous uh, mm -hmm. for doing. So uh, I was just thinking uh, the way he just transitions so smoothly from uh, his normal voice to the head voice like that while yodeling. I, I, uh, that's just one, one thing I wanted to mention. So uh, one thing that happens is that if, when you do bridging, yodeling becomes harder. Uh, okay. It's because you're now you're training your voice to not flip. Whereas yodeling is about deliberately flipping your voice. Okay. Right? You, you want to do that. So I'm flipping from my chest voice to Right? That, that is the yodeling and that is a deliberate flipping. Right? So that will become harder. But, okay. but you can get the control back. It's just that now you have to kind of do it very consciously. Yes, sir. It, you, it's like I am uh, I I have to push my voice to head okay. voice. That, that effort is there. Yeah, that, that's unfortunately true. <laughs> um, yodeling is a way of kind of flipping uh, back and forth between the two. Right? So that that going from chest voice to head voice and then back to chest voice, that is what yodeling is about. And that requires like, control and awareness and being able to kind of bring it down. Yeah, it's, it's a uh, um, very astute observation that this flipping to high, uh, sorry, the head voice is kind of like yodeling. Yeah. Any other? I think Anita Ji is trying to say something about her microphone. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just muttering things. <laughs> I'm just, uh, <laughs> to Ramya's point, I think this whole yodeling is also part of the, uh, um, the um, excess, right? The, the country songs, I think, have a little bit more from a Western perspective. Oh, a lot of, a lot of, this a lot of yodeling. Yeah. Yes. And I so think in, in India, it would be nice to hear some of those old songs. Thank you for reminding me. I'm going to listen to some of them now. <laughs> yeah, in fact, there's yodeling even in uh, Sound of Music. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, the Gothard song. One little girl and a girl. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, it's just, uh, it's quite, quite. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so one last bit uh, before we close. Uh, a few do's and don'ts for all of you. Okay, so number one, um, you must always warm up. Do not ever go into a performance cold. Because what will happen is when you're standing in on a stage or sitting on a stage, you will be under pressure. You will want to go there, you know, take your voice where it doesn't want to go because obviously you're on stage and you don't want to fail. And what will happen is that you will force your voice in ways that you shouldn't. Right? And, and the problem is that the pressure of sitting on stage or standing on stage is inevitable. Nobody's immune to that. It means that you are going to do things that are ill-advised. And the only protection against that is warming up. So the more you have warmed up, the better it is for you on the stage. So your voice will actually go where you want it to go. And it won't feel forced to the audience. And it will actually save your voice over time. So you will not be uh, injuring your voice. So a lot of times people injure their voice not even realizing they're doing it. Right? That's number one. Number two, watch out for hoarseness. If you sing and you get hoarse on a regular basis, then stop. You're doing something wrong. There is absolutely no reason for you to feel hoarse after singing. 
you may feel holes once in a while. That may be because you know you're having allergies or uh, you're just having a bad day. But it should not be a regular feature. Third, never sing the strained words. Okay, so if you're uh, but never is probably a bit too strong. Sometimes you want to sing a song that you really like to sing or somebody asks you to sing and it's kind of a little bit beyond your range and you may have to strain a little bit, but don't repeat it, right? Once in a while probably is okay. Number four, this is something counterintuitive. Working out actually helps your voice. So if you exercise, you do cardio, some kind of cardio exercise, Let's say you, you might not even do it the day of your performance. If you do it the day before, you'll discover that your voice works better. This is a very strange thing. When I was a kid, people told me not to exercise before singing. Because oh, they said, oh, you'll get phlegm in your throat and all that. This is all complete nonsense. You know, phlegm comes in your throat, it's a natural part of your body, but it will also go away. But what happens when you work out or do some physical exercise is that it energizes a lot of, gets blood flowing everywhere. And that is far more important and useful for singing than anything else like hot water or you know, things like that. Which brings me to the next point, which is a lot of people will tell you, sit, drink tea or tea with honey or with turmeric. Let me just say that I'm deeply skeptical of their uses. Uh, I've tried all of them over my 30, 40 years. And I, you know, it, they seem to work in the short term, but they don't work in the long term. So water is your best friend. It doesn't even have to be hot water. Just lukewarm water is good enough. But you must have plenty of it. And you should drink it, as I said earlier, before your performance. So that it's already in your body and saturating your tissues. See, drinking water during the performance won't help you much. It might help you with, you know, if you have a dry throat or something, but it won't help you with any, uh, you know, the, the sweetness of your voice. That will be what it is. And it's absolutely essential to have really moist vocal cords to sing well. Okay, the last and final bit. And this is also a, a truth that I've discovered by uh, experience. You need sleep. If you don't sleep, your voice will be affected. So at least for two, three days before a concert, make sure you get plenty of sleep. I don't just mean rest, I mean sleep. Okay, there's something magical about sleep in voice. That if you don't get enough sleep, your voice will start to show it. Okay, so these are all these things that I want to tell you that are outside the whole, you know, gamut of exercises. Right? Things that you should uh, cultivate and, and know. But these are not written down anywhere. These are just passed on by word of mouth. Some teachers tell you, some teachers don't tell you. So this is something you have to remember and, and take it with you for the rest of your lives, for, for your rest of your singing career. That these are the do's and don'ts you must have. And, and as long as you do that, I think there'll be, otherwise the voice is a marvelous instrument. And, you know, it knows how to take care of itself. There is one controversial piece of advice. I don't know whether to give it, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it out here and, and then take it with a pinch of salt. Some people tell you not to clear your throat, not to do this. <clears throat> They'll tell you that it's a bad thing to do. It's probably true. Though I don't know if it's universally true. A um, lot of uh, my own teachers have told me don't clear your throat because it only worsens the problem of mucus. It just shifts the mucus around but doesn't get rid of it. But my question is, okay, you're sitting on stage and you have mucus in your throat. What are you going to do? Okay? So you have to clear your throat. So I don't know how much to take, how far to take that bit of advice. But anyway, all the other bits of advice I'm absolutely sure and confident of. 
So that is the end of my instructions to you guys. So uh, Ramya has told me that she has canceled today's performance and meeting, but she has not told me whether it's going to be 16th or 30th. Uh, because she says 16th, she's still iffy. I told us 16th, 30th are both okay, so far as we know here. So we will find out from Ramya what she actually decides. She's the organizer, so she's the boss of when that performance will happen. So anyway, so let me close by saying thank you guys. Uh, it has been a real pleasure and a privilege uh, hanging out with you and talking about these things. I didn't think of this as teaching as much as kind of sharing what I know. And this is not something um, that you, you know, it's not you know, like a class where you go and take an exam. These are kind of life lessons I hope you take with you. I hope to run into each one of you sometime soon in person. And, uh, you know, maybe also we'll be able to sing together in some future, near future where we can trade our lessons and experiences and see what worked for you. Maybe not something that didn't work for you so much and vice versa. So, um, so thank you all. Um, I'll, I'll let you ask any comments or any uh, final thoughts before we close. Thank you, Uncle. So, Unfortunately, I have to leave now due to dance class. So bye, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So I want to take some time. I know we're not doing the, Ramya is not, I saw the message too that uh, Ramya saw. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're not going to be having that event. It's not decided yet. But I mm -hmm. want to take a few minutes just to thank you, Raj, for such a wonderful thing. Namaskaram. And thank you for spending the time the entire week to, you know, teach all of us. Uh, some good techniques and some things that uh, some, some people may have already known about it and some people may not have known many of the other techniques as well. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I think it was time well spent. And uh, so I just want to thank you uh, mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. And we can do the formal, the formal other things that Ramya is planning. We can plan do that another time. But I felt like this is a good time to really express my thanks for you know you spending the time to teach the children as well as me just popping into this class so i'm truly <laughs> very glad to be with the with all of you children and i've learned a lot from each one of you as well so i want to tell ramya and shankar and uh, shankar's brother what is your name i think Karthik. Karthik and shankar and ramya and aryaman of course has left the two girls, we're missing them today, mm. Arpana and, uh, but mm. I learned a lot from them as well, just hearing each one of you, because like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a trained singer. I haven't been to school like all of you have been, and you're very lucky to have all of that practice as well. So that's wonderful. Keep up your singing careers. Absolutely. All the best for that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I, I learned quite a bit myself, you know, it's, uh, something that is a passion of mine. So. Mm -hmm. I enjoy every bit of it. All I, I wish I could spend more time doing this, but unfortunately, <laughs> life intrudes. And, and, and there's always something new that one can pick up, some new nuances and some things when you just discuss with anybody else as well. So. Okay. So, so stay safe, guys. Stay well, and uh, we will see you soon. And uh, you know, uh, happy Halloween. Soon. Yeah. We probably will meet before that, but happy Halloween to everyone. <laughs> happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much uh, for taking time out and uh, sharing all your thoughts. It was really very helpful. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hi, Jayashree. Are you still with us? I can see your iPhone too, but I don't know if you're actually there. Ah, there you are. Ah, you're on mute. You're, you're muted, Jayshree. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You're on mute. I said I've been the silent participant, but I've nevertheless been a participant. I've been listening to everything along the way. Oh, very good. Okay. Any, any thoughts on... Um, you know, one, one thing I'm thinking about is you know, where to take it. Mm. Huh? I'm trying to figure out where to take this from here. I know. I was thinking about that too. I don't know yet. Um, 
It's it good to see Jai Shri. I, I haven't seen her in a long time. I know. <laughs> good to see you, Alita. How are you? I know. I, I good, good. Doing okay. I've been listening to all of you, and uh, it's been amazing how much interest all of you had. And every day we've all been here, kind of. I think when Raj hosts his next uh, series or whatever as a continuation, you know, we'll we'll this group will get back together. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I have to figure out more stuff though uh, to teach. <laughs> <laughs> No, this is really good. We can all, I was just thinking about, you know, when we go out now and somebody, you know, asks maybe, you know, one of these kids a question about how do you do this or that, they can actually sound knowledgeable about what they're doing and say, absolutely. hey, this is how I do it or this is how I recommend you do it. Yeah, absolutely. Are you a singer too, Jayashree? Have you? Yes, I, yes, I, I, I can sing. I don't know if I'm a singer, but I can sing. Okay, that's, I mean, <laughs> do very different things. I agree. I, I agree with you, but I wondered if you're a trained, I should use the words, the technical terms. Are you a trained, classical trained the singer? How's that? <laughs> no, that means you have learned something, of course. <laughs> Everybody has learned something or the other. So, so Jayashree, I will, I will kind of put it this way. Uh, you know, your point is well taken that the kids know now how to talk about it, but Yes. I would say that you know what we did this in this workshop is the craft of mm -hmm. singing. Correct. Right. This is not about the content. You know, you can right. get the content elsewhere. This is about the craft of how to use the tools that you have to help make a better product at the end. Yep. No, this yeah. this is really good. Um, I, and I'm sure in the beginning I could see that they were like, okay, where is this going? But I know, right? now, as, as the series went on, every now and then I would kind of tune in and, and I'd see that they were engaged. And so that was really good that they were starting to put it together. Yes, yes, yeah. and that was very gratifying. Yeah. I think one of the key things that I thought was really uh, this whole, um, the breathing part of it. I know that I've mentioned this to my yoga kids that used to come during dance class. You know, they're all dance students, Bharat Natyam, as well as uh, Carnatic music students. And I've always told them all along that, you know, the breathing will help in different ways. So practice your breathing, the belly breathing, all of these different things. And I see more and more that that is definitely the case. Uh, that, you know, for the longevity of the voice and things like that, it will definitely help uh, for the children as well. So to incorporate these, you know, some of these breathing techniques uh, in between. The belly breathing and all of that, which is all very natural in in yoga. So. Okay, so I think uh, it's a nice point to close on. Uh, so thank you all, and we will see you sometime soon. Thank you very much for yes. participating. Thank you very much. Thank Namaskaram you, again. Thank you, sir. Again. Thank you, Raj. Thank we'll you. see you on your fa at your Facebook event. That's right. We'll see you then. Okay. Is that a general event or a, a Facebook event? Is is that like a general? For a public event? No, 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 the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing that Ramya is organizing. She's putting. Oh, I see. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Jayashi, I don't know if you got the message, but Ramya canceled today's. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Good to know. She's. she's well, actually, I'll, I'll look for the ne next yeah, um, in, uh, announcement about today. that. She's in Sounds good. today driving back. I don't think she'll make it in time. So, so it'll have to be another day. It will be either the 16th or the 30th. That's what she told me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.